Hey, good morning. Week two of gathering back together. It's exciting. Hey, if you're new to FSN, I am Pastor Virgil, one of the pastors here, and we are just excited that you're here. So as Pastor Jeff said, next week we will not be here. We'll be at the LaRoche uh, Baseball Complex. How many of you guys grew up eating Cracker Jacks? Raise your hand. I'm going to tell you, what, what was in those Cracker Jack boxes? You guys remember? A little prize or a little toy? I apologize to the younger generations. The toys are not the same that they used to be. I remember as a kid going to Grandpa's house, we'd uh, gather up in the uh, trailer. He would go in the tractor. Ten minutes into town, we'd go to this little uh, shop, and we would get Cracker Jacks, and the toys were awesome. But guess what? Next week, you guys all get Cracker Jacks. Yeah. I'm sorry the toys aren't very nice, but, but you guys get Cracker Jacks, so we are excited about next week, so 8.30 at the ballpark, and it'll be a fantastic night. So we are in our final week of a series we're calling Ridiculous Faith. We're looking at the life of Elisha. So 2 Kings chapter 6 is where we're going to be at today. So if you want to get your Bibles out, you can go, go ahead and turn to 2 Kings chapter 6. So how many of you guys have ever lost something or misplaced something, and it was right in front of your eyes the whole time? You guys have been, ever done that? Maybe you're looking for your cell phone, and it's in your hand the whole time. Maybe you've lost your water stool, and it shows up Sunday morning. Uh, a few weeks ago, uh, it's probably been a few months ago, we was at Home Depot, and I couldn't find my debit card. I was panicking. Uh, Lisa and I had one time had a, a debit card stolen. Somebody had charged a bunch of things. So we just kind of had an anxiety attack about, about that debit card. And so uh, we call the bank. We say, hey, we, we've lost our card. We don't know if it's stolen. Will you just cancel the card right now? And guess what happened? Ten minutes later, it was in the floorboard where... You know, we went into the store, we was looking everywhere for it. Um, there was a, uh, one time when I was a youth pastor uh, early on in Iowa, and uh, we did a major uh, relocation. We was in a uh, church right in the middle of town, and we bought some property just right outside of town. We built uh, a brand new church, and uh, we were meeting with the contractor, kind of getting some plans uh, made. And so uh, this guy is bald-headed. I don't know why, but he, I just remember he was bald-headed. And so he had these reading glasses on. And when he was done with those ring glasses, he would just simply slide them up. You guys, you see people do that. Well, a little bit later, he was looking for his, his reading glasses. He reached inside of his bag, and he puts another pair of reading glasses on, not knowing that his reading glasses are on top of his head. When he's done with those reading glasses, what does he do? He slides those up on the top of his head a little bit longer. He's looking for his reading glasses. He reaches in his bag. He puts another pair of reading glasses on. By the end of the meeting, he did not realize he had three pairs of reading glasses on on top of his head. Sometimes we can lose stuff that we didn't intend to lose. Sometimes in our spiritual walk, we can lose our edge and we did not intend to lose it. This sermon is very personal to me because there are times in my life where I've lost my spiritual edge, where I just don't have that fire or that hope or that passion that I once had. And maybe you are the same way. Maybe you don't have that, that edge, that passion, that fire, that hope, that faith that you once had in your relationship with God. And I pray that today, that maybe if you find yourself in that place, that we With the help of the Holy Spirit, he can begin to get that spiritual edge that we once had. There are times, I weep at times, God give me that edge, that fire that I once had. And so looking back at this series, we looked at burning some plows. We looked at when God called Elisha, there was no turning back, there was no plan B. God, I am all in. The second week, we looked at God called the the kings to dig some ditches. And it wasn't until they dug the ditches that God began to fill those ditches with water. And when we show God our faith, God begins to show us his power. And when we show God our faith, God begins to show us his power. And then last week, we looked at the widow who was in need. 
And God said, just continue to pour the oil. And all she needed was empty vessels or empty jars. And God wants us to come to him empty. Empty of our pride, empty of our prejudice, empty, empty of our greed, empty of ourselves so that he can begin to fill us with his Holy Spirit. And there's so many miracles even though we're closing this series today, there's so many miracles in the life of Elijah. God performing miracles. God big miracles. Naaman, we looked at him a few months ago where he dipped himself in the water seven times. And, and there are miracles of, of the axe head, or sorry, of, of, uh, of raising a boy back to life, or, or the miracle of, of healing poison water, or even the miracle that, that Elisha, through the power of God, blinded a whole army. I encourage you to go look at it in 2 Kings. But today we're going to look at a story of how Elisha performed a miracle of a making an, axe, iron, an iron axe head float to the top of the water. And metaphorically, we're going to look at two principles of how we can get our spiritual edge back as we look at this story. And so as we just unpack this story this morning, Elisha, he had a school. He had a school or a, a gathering of prophets, and, and it was like a seminary, and, and he, they had outgrown the space that they were in. They said, well, let's build a brand new space. Let's go out and build a new place that we can live together, that we can begin to Elisha, you can begin to teach us. And so they went out and a, and a poor seminary student, many of you guys probably went to college, you understand what it's like to be a co- poor college student. As he, he's chopping down the tree, all of a sudden the axe head goes, whoop, 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 right into the, you guys love my sound effects? Brings a story to life, let me tell you. Um, as he is doing that, the axe head falls out and he goes into this panic as any poor college student. He has no means to replace this axe head and Elisha takes a stick he simply throws it in the water and the axe head floats to the top and the story tells me that God cares about the little things in our life how insignificant is that axe head but God cares about the little things in your life what are those little things that at times we don't bring to God because we think they're too small or insignificant. God cares about those things. So let's, let's read the story this morning and we'll look at these two principles of how we can get our spiritual edge back. So uh, 2 Kings chapter 6, uh, starting in verse 1, it says this. The company of the prophets said to Elisha, Look, the place where we meet with you is too small for us. Let us go to the Jordan where each of us can get a pole and let us build a place there for us to live. Then Elisha said, go. Then one of them said, and this interesting concept that, that kind of grabbed me uh, this week as I was reading the story. One of them said, won't you please come with your servants? And Elisha's response is, I will. And he went with them. Let me tell you, as a minister of the gospel of Jesus, it's an important philosophy then it's time to get work done to work hand in hand with your folks all hands on deck when something needs to get done don't just go out and 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 and, and kind of do your own thing but work hand in hand with your people and that's been my philosophy when something needs to get done when there's vbs there's children's department or the youth department needs something done, you get in there and you work with them Going on. They went to the Jordan and began to cut down trees. As one of them was cutting down the tree, the iron axe had fell into the water. Oh, my Lord, he cried out. It was borrowed. This anxiety raised up in this poor college student. And the man of God asked, where did it fall? And when he showed him the place, Elijah cut the stick and threw it in there. And he made the iron float. Verse 7. Lift it out, he said. Then the, man of, then the man reached out his hand and took it. So the main idea for today is this. God knows how to help you find what you didn't mean to lose. God knows how to help you find what you didn't mean to lose. Many of us lose things of great value, particularly when it comes to our spiritual nature, our spiritual edge. 
but I'm reminded that God wants to restore us back to that passion that we once had. So the question is this, that I pose to you this morning, is have you lost your spiritual edge? Have you lost your spiritual edge? Our spiritual edge can get dinged or nicked, and over time, it can become dull. You didn't mean for it to happen, but it did. And there's multiple reasons of why you and I can lose our spiritual edge, maybe at one time. We surrounded ourselves with people who challenged us, who moved us, who encouraged us in our spiritual walk. But now we find ourselves surrounded by people who don't challenge us spiritually in our walk with Him. We didn't mean to lose our spiritual life, but just as time went on, maybe at one time we served the church, we served faithfully, we're heavily involved in ministry, and life gets busy. And at times we stop. We stopped serving in a way that we once did. Maybe we used to be passionate about prayer, that every single evening, right before we go to bed, we, we, we sought God's face in prayer, but today we just barely pray before meals, and it's not a high priority for us. Or maybe it's about, maybe we once shared our faith. We were passionate about seeing people who didn't yet know Jesus Christ come to a relationship with Jesus Christ, but now we, people don't even really know if we even follow Jesus by how we live our life. Or maybe we had such high standards, spiritual standards in God's word, but over time with one little compromise after another, we've gone from from point A with the high standards and we find ourselves in point B and we ask ourselves, how did I get there? And we've lost something that we did not intend to lose. In reality, there's an enemy that wants you to lose that edge. He wants you to lose that spiritual edge. He wants you to not be as effective for God's kingdom as you once were. He wants to destroy you, and he wants to destroy the heart of God that is in you. And even as a pastor at times, we can find ourselves, we've lost that edge, and we have to ask ourselves, how do we lose that edge? I remember as a teenager, as a freshman in high school, God really grabbed my heart. There was an event called Acquire the Fire Teen Mania Ministries. In fact, this week I was just, uh, just got online, got on YouTube and found the album that I used to listen to of those worship songs. Through the youth ministry and through a series of youth events, God just really began to do something in me as a high school student. And I remember being called into ministry and going to school. And I, I you know, I believed that like, It was going to be the spiritual high all the time going to ministry. That opened up God's word and it was just like illuminator glow with everything that I was going to learn. That that when I spoke to students that the altars were going to be filled all the time. Because my speaking was incredible. But the enemy and his craftiness... And he knows the right places where to kind of butt in to our lives and distract us. And the temptation is to be distracted. That times that we just don't go to God in prayer as we used to. Or maybe we don't open up God's word as much as we used to. And we just open it up just to get sermons out of it. Bill Hybel said this, The way I was doing the work of God destroyed the work of God in me. The way I was doing the work of God destroyed the work of God and me. And I I can relate to that. We get busy. We get distracted. The enemy knows where to butt himself in. And I know as pastors, we we have to be daily in God's word. made fresh within us. Seeking his face on a full-time basis. But at times, we can become a full-time pastor and a part-time follower of Jesus. We become a full-time pastor and a part-time follower of Jesus. And many of you guys can relate to that. You know, we can become a full-time parent. But as life distracts us and leads us away, we become a part-time follower of Jesus. We can be a full-time businessman or a businesswoman, but a part-time follower of Of Jesus and life just happens. We begin to lose that spiritual edge. We can be a full time student. 
but just a part-time follower of Jesus or maybe a full-time teacher and a part-time follower of Jesus or a full-time laborer and a part-time follower of Jesus. We didn't mean to lose our spiritual edge, but we did. You didn't mean to drift away, but you did. You didn't mean to stop worshiping God and with the passion that you once had, but you did. You didn't mean to go back to those old patterns, those addictive habits, but you did. You didn't mean to lose that intimacy that God wants with you and you wake up depressed, empty and hollow, but you did. You didn't mean to become a part-time follower of Jesus, but you did. And to be honest with you, many times we can lose that edge that God wants for us. We don't intend to. And the second question is this. The first question is, have you lost your spiritual edge? If you answer and if you're honest and you say, you know what, I've lost that edge, that passion, that hope, that faith that I once had. The second question is, is how do I get it back? How do I get it back? I believe we find two principles in this story. Two principles of getting our spiritual edge back. The first one is this, is we have to be honest about where we lost it. 2 Kings 6, 6, it says this, where did it fall? He asked the student, Elijah, ask the student, where did it fall? Where did you lose it? In other words... It's not really gone. It's where you last had it. Where did you lead it? When was the last time you had that spiritual edge that you once had, that you want? What happened in your life that distracted you from having that spiritual edge? What stopped you from disciplining the disciplined pursuit of Jesus? You maybe you've stopped praying. And really searching out God in his word. Maybe you've stopped tithing or giving to the church. And stopped telling your heart that money is not my God. Maybe you stopped being part of a community group. And you've isolated yourself from people who challenge you. Who lift you up. Maybe it could have been something that happened to you. Maybe a spouse or a loved one or a church member, something happened to you and you walked away from having that, that, that spiritual edge that you once had. Or maybe you got into that relationship that you know you shouldn't have, but through that relationship it drug you down from that passion. And to be honest, One thing that can stop me from having that spiritual edge is to care about what other people think and not about what God thinks. I don't know if you're like me, but there's a lot of times I can care about what people think, how they respond to what I say or what I do or how I make decisions, not really care. And not not necessarily not really care, but sometimes not taking it seriously. God, what is it that you want? What do you think? And let me tell you, the enemy raked me over the coals this past week. Some things and decisions and maybe things that, that I said this past week in, in last week's sermon that he can rake me over the coals and I can begin to put my focus on people and not on my focus on God. And I can begin to lose that spiritual edge. So I ask you, where did you lose it? When did you stop searching after Jesus? The question is, where did it fall? Where did you lose it? Looking back in your life, where is that place that you lost that spiritual edge? The second question is this, second principle, is with God's help, take back what you lost. With God's help, take back with you what you lost. And so as the axe head was in the water, Elisha took the stick and he threw it into the water and the axe head floated to the top. And what does Elisha say to this young man? Lift it out. Elisha didn't bend down and pick it up. He wanted that young man to have the faith to reach down and take out the axe head. Be honest where you lost it and ask God to help you pick it back up. You see, God, I know God desires to restore you into that intimate relationship that he wants with you. These last few weeks, we looked at that God sent the water, but they had to dig the ditch. God multiplied the oil, but they had to gather the jars. This week, God made the axe head float, but he wanted the student to pick it up. 
Some of you right now desire to have that spiritual edge back that you once had. But God is saying to you right now, I've given you a way to pick it back up, but there's a voice in the back of your head and the voice of the enemy that says you've gone too far. You've done too much. You're never going to get it back. Your edge is too dull that God is never going to sharpen it back at, and that is a lie of the enemy. God wants to, you to do your part, and God will do his part because he wants to bring you back in relationship with him. In Revelation chapter 4, it says this. Chapter 2, sorry. Yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken the love you had at first. Consider how far you have fallen. Consider how far that, that spiritual edge that you once had. Consider that distance. But he doesn't stop there. He doesn't want us just to sit and consider and to think about. But what does he see to do? Repent and do the things you did at first. If we want to have that spiritual edge, we first have to say, God, I'm sorry, I repent of being distracted. I want that spiritual edge back, but then he gives us a task to go back and do the things that we once did. God knows where you are, but he has provided a way. I want to illustrate uh, the sermon like this. Uh, we cleared out some land um, and after clearing out the land, there was just like a bunch of roots that were just like scattered all everywhere. <clears throat> so as I, after I took the bush hog and, and cut down as many roots as I could, there were still roots that were sticking up out of the ground, and we had to get rid of those. And so what I did is uh, walk the property and just took my axe head. A number of years ago, my, my dad gave me uh, this double-headed axe uh, for Christmas. And so what I would do is I'd take this axe and I'd just kind of pop it into the ground and the, ac or the, the root would come and Trenton was behind me. He would take those roots and he'd throw them on the pile. And so as I was going through, I just simply right below ground, I just kind of take the root and just keep moving it down. And let me tell you, that's a workout right there. That's, um, but you notice something about Bourbon County soil. Some of you guys are know where I'm headed. Is just below the surface is what? Rocks. So as I was going through and knocking down the roots, my axe head was coming nicked, dinged, and dull. And I noticed it I, I, because I didn't care because I knew that if I sharpened it, it was just going to happen again and again. And so I would just go through and, well, we got the land cleared and started mowing and there's some stumps that are a little bit high. And so I was like, well, I got to get my axe out and chop out the stumps. And so I get my axe out and I'm just whacking away like, wow, man, I'm about to pass out. My heart's racing. That's a good workout right there. And uh, I was like, I forgot that my axe head was dull. And I was working my butt off. I shouldn't say that. I was working myself to death, getting that stump out with the dull axe head. And so what I had to do is I had to take my axe head, and I could have done on a grinder. I'm kind of old school, and I took my whetstone. Make sure I get the right side. There we go. To get my axe head back to where I wanted it. So I took it, and I just simply rubbed the edge and carefully watched as I did it to make sure I didn't take off too much, but just enough that I wanted to, and I would, I'd flip it over and make sure the other side, and one side is a whole lot worse than the other side, and I would grind it down, grind the edges down, and, and uh, make sure it's as sharp as possible, and eventually it got to the place where my axe head was sharp enough where I could use it again, and it was high highly effective as an axe head and not just as something I whacked with. And, but sometimes in our spiritual walk, we can do that. We can get distracted, get nicks and dings. We can allow life to happen. Maybe something's happened to us and we kind of lose that 
edge that we once had. We try to perform or try to do the spiritual walk with Jesus, and we're just not doing it very well. And God says, hey, what does Revelation 2 say? Repent and do the things you did at first. And so if you want your spiritual uh, edge back, well, what do you got to do? You got to start grinding that edge and doing the things that you once did and say, God, God, I repent of allowing my life to be distracted by things and by people. God, I'm going to get back into your word and daily get into word, his word and begin to break down or begin to sharpen that edge. Maybe it's getting back into prayer every single day. God, I seek you. I seek your face. Maybe it's as a, a family gathering together for a meal and saying, God, we're going to seek you together and we're going to have the, that spiritual edge that we once had. Maybe it's, it's going back into to worship. God, I haven't worshipped you the way that I once did. I love Queen, but sometimes Queen doesn't lead me to Jesus. And so I, <laughs> that was totally off the top of my head. <laughs> and so I get worship music on, Teen Mania, and man, remember those songs that we used to worship to and say, God, I want to get my spiritual edge back. I want to do those things that I once did before. Maybe for some of you, it's your marriage. Stop spending time together. Your marriage just isn't as sharp as it once was. And it affects your kids, and it affects other people, and it affects your life. And you ask, well, what do I need to do? Well, how about... Hey, maybe let's read together. Maybe let's, let's pray together. Maybe, maybe let's get back to God's, with God's family, God's church together. Maybe it's going back to a community group together to kind of sharpen our marriage, sharpen our relationship with one another. Maybe it's sitting down as a family, turn the TV off. Maybe, maybe it's going on a date. Maybe it's going on a date. And leaving your cell phone at home. Or maybe for some of us, let me switch that around so I can get the other side. We're just not as our minds, not that we're not as sharp in our minds, but man, let me tell you, the enemy can really destroy our minds. We begin to, 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 to listen to the lies, and I'm not good enough, that I can't do this enough, that, that I don't measure up, that God, I, I've gone too far from you, but what do we need to do to get back and to sharpen our minds spiritually? Is maybe start quoting scripture to ourselves, that no weapon formed against me shall prosper, nothing that the enemy can do can distract me from God's calling on my life. Or maybe it's saying, um, the, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but in him, Satan, God has given me life, life that is abundant, it is overjoy, and life to the max, and, and life to the extreme. Maybe, maybe it's given us a new identity. Stop listening to the lies of the enemy and say, God is for me. God has made me a new creation. God has done things for me and through me. Maybe it is. Listen to some, some worship music. Luke Bryant. He's got an okay voice, but maybe I just need to put the country music away and, and, and begin to listen to the worship music that lifts me up and encourages my mind. Maybe it's, it's seeking out godly counsel. I have to do that all the time. Seeking out godly counsel, saying, you know what? I'm just not getting over this. And they begin to sharpen me. As iron sharpens iron, so does one man sharpen another, and my mind begins to be renewed what if it's about forgiveness? You know you need to forgive somebody. And through life, it's become dull. And we understand that what God's word says about forgiveness and how we are to forgive one another. And, and we understand that God has forgiven us much and so we in turn must forgive. And so we say, God, I, I choose to forgive and forgive, and forgive my spouse, my brother, my parents, my co-workers, sometimes my children. God, I forgive, 
I forgive and I forgive. And what does God's word say about forgiveness? Sometimes it takes forgiving someone 70 times over and over and over and over again. Maybe for some of us, you know, we struggle with the health of our bodies. Maybe we need to eat a little healthier. Let me get a different edge. Let's do this. For me, I got to put the Mountain Dew down. Maybe eat a little bit less snacks and a little healthier and, and listen to the doctor when he says I need to, to start doing things and we begin to get our spiritual edge or get our edge back uh, physically because we know when we have our edge back physically it sharpens our minds, it sharpens our spirits. It's amazing how our bodies are connected so much with our spirit or maybe for, for some of us, my, myself included, it's, it's our education, it's our learning. I often say this, I was ADD before ADD was cool. And so I really struggled through school, and I did those things, but I, had to, I, I realized I had to work hard, I had to buckle down, I had to focus, and even times in my office, I got to buckle down, get less distracted, and do those things that I know are good for me mentally. But for so many of us, we're trying to work with a dull edge. I think I'm ready. And so for so many years, for some of us, we've worked with a dull edge. We don't even remember what a sharp edge looks like anymore. We've let the cares of this world of things to happen when we're trying to do this walk with Jesus in our own power. But let me tell you, we have a spiritual edge. We're so much more effective in our walk with Him. And we can be used as a tool of high effectancy, efficiency, instead of one that just spinning our, will, spinning our wills in our relationship with Him. I want to tell you, We have empty jars. You got to keep pouring. When you're digging some ditches, one shovel a load at a time. When it comes to your faith, doing the things that you know you need to do. So I want to ask you two questions. Have you lost it? Have you lost your spiritual edge? I know at times as a pastor, I, I can. And so I know if I do, I know other people do too. And I have to go back to the things I once did. Get back into his word. Get back into faithfully pursuing him and seeking his face. And the second question is, is if you've lost it, do you want it back? And what do you need to do to get it back? So with every head bowed and every eye closed, I just want you to think about that this morning. God, this morning we just, first we just want to repent. God, I repent of at times losing that edge. I've, I've been distracted by life, by things. Lord, I've listened to people's voice and not your voice. God, I repent of that. But God, I ask that you just give us the courage to go back to our first love, to our first passion, and that is you, and discover those things that we once did, to remember those things that we once did, of gathering together with your people, not just on a Sunday morning, but to, to allow people to sharpen us. As iron sharpens iron, so does one person sharpen another. Surrounding ourselves with people that lift us up and encourages us. But by, by getting into your word, by listening to your truth and not the lies of the enemy, nothing the enemy can do 
can destroy our faith if we are in you, Father. God, maybe it's just seeking your face. Praying with our spouse, praying with our kids, praying with your people. God, what I need to do is different than what other people need to do. And I, get, I, I just pray right now, God, that you just begin to speak to hearts. Or maybe this morning, church, maybe you haven't had that relationship with God before and you want to begin that journey with Him. As we discussed last week, we have to empty ourselves of our own pride and greed and prejudice and of ourself and say, God, fill me. Essentially what we're saying is, God, we surrender ourselves to you. And I just pray that you just begin to do that. Say, God, I surrender myself to you. Lord, forgive me of my sins. God, I'm tired of, of walking down the old roads and the old journey and doing the same old things. God, I want to begin a new relationship with you. I thank you, Father. God, I believe that you're going to begin to do something new in each and every one of us. God, I believe that you can transform this community through a people. Say, God, sharpen me. God, sharpen my spirit, sharpen my mind, sharpen my body, sharpen my relationships. God, bring us back to that first love. Lord, I just thank you for the example of Elisha's life. God, of how we are to live this ridiculous faith that sometimes it doesn't even make sense to us, but God, you're calling us to something new. We thank you, Father. Lord, as we go, I pray that we be all things, all people. God, because we are spiritually sharp, we can share the hope of Jesus. I thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. See you guys next week, 8.30, the ball field. I'm excited about it. See you.